Hi, my name is Willow and today I am talking about something that honestly this discussion happened years ago and I was a part of it. However, I was just a viewer and not a creator and I just wanted to sort of give my opinion and compare and contrast it to how it was back then because my opinion on this has changed quite a bit. And if you've seen the title, basically I'm just going to be talking about paperback versus hardback. And I'm going to fully admit that up until last year, maybe even two years ago, I was 100% hardback. Like, full on, like, I don't want any paperbacks, I just want hardbacks because they're so much nicer and blah blah blah. But here's the thing, hardbacks are so exp- like, they're so expensive and it's- it makes me cry, it makes my wallet cry, I mean, like, my shelves look beautiful but it just makes me sad how expensive they are and how much money I'm- I wouldn't say wasting because I don't regret mo most of the books that I buy. Yikes. But I just feel like there are a lot of chances when I could have bought a very fine paperback when I decided to go the extra mile, I guess, and just go out of my way to get a freaking hardback when honestly like it doesn't matter that much I guess and here's the thing I it really depends for me for paperback and hardback like some paperbacks are literally the worst to read like it's hard to keep them open you can't read it with one hand and comfortably like flip the pages and everything and hopefully the example that I'm overlaying here shows what I'm saying right now but it's just weird like yeah okay it doesn't hurt to read it because you don't have like a piece of cardboard sticking into your wrist or something but at the same time all I end up doing with paperbacks usually is sort of wrecking the book and wrecking the spine because I'm trying to hold it open properly to read it. But then there's some paperbacks, like with the Lux series, and I know the bigger versions of Outlander are really nice and floppy, and you can just open them and read them, and it's really great. And I don't know why some are like that and some aren't. And even though I'm using Milk and Honey, which is a small paperback, so yeah, that's understandable. Obviously, it's just not gonna flop open unless it's made out of like rice paper or something. But some of my other bigger paperbacks are just so hard to read and it's so frustrating because I really, really don't want to ruin the spine. And you know, some of my paperback collections I'm really happy with. Like I have all of my Stephanie Perkins books. At least I know that the new book that I'm going to get of hers won't be in paperback, but I have her like romance trilogy thing all in paperback and it looks so nice and that's the thing is that I've sort of changed from having everything in hardcover to just having everything match. Like god, I will buy things in paperback if I have to unless it's super beautiful. Like with the Ruby Red series by Kristen Gear, I don't want to buy the paperback of that because the hardcover is literally freaking gorgeous. You know, why not spend a little bit more for some gorgeous, gorgeous hardbacks? So that's sort of my exception, but I really just want everything to match because, you know, having like the first book in paperback and the rest in hardback looks weird on my shelf. At least that's me. Like, maybe that's my like OCD perfectionist personality coming out, but it really irks me. So just as long as I have everything matching, it doesn't really matter that much to me. Unless, of course, it's a beautiful hardback. Like, for example, this wonderful Ravenclaw House edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. You know, I'm gonna buy every single Harry Potter book again with Ravenclaw covers because it's just so beautiful and why not? Like, they have paperback ones, but the hardbacks are just so much prettier that that is what I chose to buy. So, you know, I am doing it to myself, but at the same time, I'm less uptight about it than I was a couple years ago, and I know I sided with a lot, and I'm not gonna, like, blame anyone, but a lot of the bigger booktubers were like, I am only buying a hardback and blah blah, and I was like, yeah, sounds good. I, I think so too. But at the time, I didn't have a job, 
I didn't get allowance or anything, you know, I don't come from a super rich family where I can just have my parents' money to spend. And you know, all these bigger booktubers are getting paid to talk about books and all of that stuff so they could afford it, but I sort of boxed myself into that mindset, which is awful. Like, I'm trying to get out of this, but I used to really let other people's opinions, like booktubers and other book people online, form my opinions, which is literally terrible, and I'm going on a tangent, but yeah, I'm trying to get out of the letting other people's opinions influence mine. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> I just, I guess, feel more free that I am okay with buying some paperbacks instead of being really insane about only having hardcovers. But you know, sometimes hardcovers are pretty hard to read, like, it's sort of hard to keep them open and whatever. But others, like my Cassandra Clare books, are really, really easy to read. And I do realize that I am using Clockwork Prince, which is one of my oldest Cassandra Clare books as an example, which means the spine is completely messed up and it'll just lie completely flat open. And if you drop it, it'll like open up because the spine is that messed up. But even with newer Cassandra Clare hard books, I find them really easy to read because I don't know if this is me wrecking the spine or if it's just how it is, but usually when I open the book, the spine like bends nicely with the book, or maybe that's just me breaking it, I don't know. All I know is that with Clockwork Prince, at least, and with a couple of my other Cassandra Clare books, the spine has literally come off, like the glue has unstuck from the cardboard bit, so the black bit of the actual, like, book binding is sort of separate from that, which means I totally messed it up. But, I don't know, I just find them easier to read, I guess. So it really depends, but along with aesthetic beauty, like I said, Having things be easier to read and to open on my lap and not be uncomfortable with really influences my decision as well when buying a book. So that pretty much sums up my thoughts on paperback versus hardback, which in a nutshell is it depends. So that really wasn't the most interesting answer, but I'm glad to have had, I guess, evidence to support my opinions, I guess. But otherwise, I thought this was just a fun little video for this week and to just sort of talk about my opinion in that big discussion. And actually, if you have an opinion about paperback or hardback or if you just don't care, let me know in the comments because I would love to chat to people and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful day and you can subscribe to my channel over here. You can check out some of my other videos over here and otherwise I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!